welcome to Alpha Mind Hypnosis and Coaching series here on YouTube. My name is Elena Mazaner and I am a hypnotherapist and professional coach. So in each episode you're going to see me work with a new client on a different issue. Many of you have asked me how hypnosis works and how hypnosis sessions are conducted. So you're going to be able to witness exactly what happens. Remember, it's going to be a shorter version. Um, there's going to be a pre-talk, as always, where I coach a client, and there's going to be a hypnosis part as well. So I'm excited about the show, and I hope you'll be coming more often. Remember to subscribe. And here we are. The session begins now. All right, Elena, welcome. Thank you so much for being part of this. <clears throat> of course. Yes. So tell me, so first of all, the way it's going to work, we're going to talk a little bit about hypnosis, how it works so that you can have a complete understanding of uh, this process. And okay. uh, you can ask me any questions you have. And then we're going to talk about what you want to achieve. So we're going to talk about your goals. And then finally, we're going to design your... Um, specific unique uh, narrative your mindset so to say so you can get closer to your outcome that you're looking for okay okay and, sounds good yeah and then the actual hypnosis part it will happen today but we're going to do a shorter version of it not not the full blown but a shorter version but it's still going to be very good and i'll teach you some self-hypnosis techniques as well Okay. So, uh, so your name is Elena, just like mine, uh, and uh, you also have Russian background, right? Yes, I do. Where Where are you from? I'm from Moldova. Moldova, it's so this little uh -huh. country, yeah, by Ukraine. Yes. Yeah, so Moldova is used to be part of Soviet Union. Correct. Yes. So you speak Romanian, I think, or Moldova, which is close to Romanian, right? I think I'm part of a Russian part of Moldova, so the uh -huh. only language we speak is Russian. <laughs> got it, got it. Okay, well, we're going to be doing it in English because we have an English audience. So, sure. let's talk about your expectation. What would you like to achieve at the end of the session? Um, I definitely would like to learn about the techniques that I can implement in my daily life. So something that will, I know what to do, what, um, how to get in meditative state and maybe do it on my own, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. a, a way to kind of tap into that subconscious mind that at times is difficult to get into, you know, because of whether it's the noise, you know, or the, the stress of daily life. Um, I'd like to get more confidence in, in my decision making, you know, whether mm -hmm. it's um, career goals, personal goals. I, I'd like to know that whatever decision feels right is the correct way to go and not doubt myself so much, you know, constantly debating, you know, what if this won't work out? Maybe I should stick to what I know. Don't really try to go out in a adventure so to say mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. most likely stay within your little box that you're very comfortable in mm -hmm. so you said not to go on the, the adventure but more likely to stay within the box you'd like to stay that's within? something that i need to fight against ah okay you want to fight against staying in the box yeah uh-huh mm -hmm. and tell yeah. me more about the adventure what is what what, what was the part about the adventure well, the adventure, you know, there's always that urge or that feeling of trying something new, mm -hmm. but the fear of failing or the fear of um, stepping out of the box or, for example, me personally, it has to do with, I call myself a, a, control, a control freak because I know my job, I like my job, I know the results of my, you know, career, so for me to, you know, stop for a little bit, take a break and explore the world or travel it is very risky. And I think there's a part of me that wants to do that and explore different things and maybe try new things. Um, but, you know, that 
mindset that what are you going to do for money? What if, uh, you know, something happens? What if there's an emergency and you won't be able to sustain yourself or there's no backup plan or, you know, these constant voices Mm -hmm. that are, you know, holding me back from kind of doing what I think um, I would like to do more Mm -hmm. like artistic or talent way Mm -hmm. rather than, you know, go to work, Mm -hmm. get your money and then come home and, you know, mm-hmm. the basics, Monday yeah. to Friday, nine to five job, mm-hmm. where I feel inside of me that I need to explore, like I need to get out and do something, you know, mm-hmm. there's that urge, but, yeah. So what I hear you say is that you want to explore some ways, some techniques to be able to tap into your subconscious mind and to relax, and also the second part is that you want to be able to uh, get out of the box. You say that you may be a, a, a control freak, as you mentioned, and uh, they, there's a fear, fear of failure, um, and you tend to you know, have the doubts and something that's stopping you from exploring, right? There are things that you want to do um, uh, per, uh, personally and professionally, right, that are more out there in the world so to say, but there's always something in the back of your mind, like a tape, Uh, what am I going to do, how am I going to, how am I going to make money, or what if it's not right, what am I, what will, you know, what will people say, or things like that, right, something along those lines, doubts, right, exactly, so, but you are aware of it, you understand that there's something stopping you, and that is the doubt that you have in yourself, is it yeah. doubt in yourself or doubt in your abilities? What, tell me more about that doubt, that voice. That's that's what I'm trying to understand because the doubt is that um, there's no, I guess because I don't feel support, I don't feel that my family will be able to support me if I fail. So that feeling of being alone in anything that I try, I don't know if if it's, a realistic thing if it's only in my head that I'm always alone and by myself so I have to depend on my own abilities so I'm trying to stay on the safe side but I feel like staying on the safe side is detrimental to my just well-being because then I begin to feel you know just undeveloped if that makes sense mm-hmm. and the doubt is that well, you've never tried this. You don't have anyone to ask advice from. So how is it that you'll make it? So the the voice is always saying, you know, there's just stick to what you know. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, stick you'll fail. You know. Stick to what you know. And uh, I hear you say that there's no support from your immediate environment. And that is mainly family? Yeah. Uh-huh. Are you talking about uh, emotional support or any any or any anything else? What type of support are you talking about? Um, it's difficult. I feel like it's more financial support mm-hmm. because um, financial stability for me is a priority. Mm-hmm. So if yeah. I and I don't depend on other people, so I'm not the type to ask someone for help if I need to. I need, I've always been the type that figure it out on your own yeah so, I can hear that whether it, huh? I can hear that yes I can totally understand that also coming yeah. from the same you know Russian background I came here on my own and I started my life on my own so you know I when we come from Russia from a different country Moldova or Eastern Europe or any other country to start our life on our own with no support system no family we have to find ways to to build that system and um, in reality there are systems luckily in America there are systems that can support you um, whether it's organizations um, loans um, grants for your projects so there are resources there's tons of resources but I can hear how there's still maybe that maybe even in comparison you know um, to 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 other situations or other people that may have support and you may see how easy it is to have support um, the, the family in the same country and you know someone who's paying for a college or something like that right but um, 
many many people are starting on their own from scratch and they're the, and they are the survivors so i can hear how there may be this belief that i don't have that cushion you know to 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 start i can't take a risk because i have to support myself or what if it doesn't work out what if i fail and i'm going to lose everything how am i going to live like all that stuff right so i think what you're what you're talking about is having the confidence confidence to to be you right to whatever whatever it is that you want to do for your life and your career i don't know exactly what what you want you can tell me a little bit um so i, so I have some understanding uh, do you want to be an artist do you want to be creative do you want, do you want to be a businesswoman right so all of these things are possible um and and um it's just a matter of having absolute belief in yourself and also knowing that the environment is supportive there's tons of resources there. And sometimes because there may be this idea that I don't have the support, we're so selective in our thinking that we're not seeing the support all around. There may be support coming from from your neighbor, from um, your teacher, your colleague, your boyfriend. There may be so much love and support around, right? So it's just a matter of really opening up to it. So, so tell me briefly, what, what, do you, what is this ideal world that you're talking about that you're exploring what kind of profession it is it is what's on your mind i think number one is the fact that i feel like i i need a break you know to really like you said discover and like sit with myself and just figure it out what it is that i i want or which direction to go because at the same time there's so many directions and being in, you know, New York City and everything is cluttered and everything is just, you know, you have pullings from all over the place. You know, there's, I can do something, you know, athletic in terms of like maybe develop myself and putting the time into my physical body. Or maybe I can just do what I already do but start my own business. Or maybe I should just, there's so many directions and I think, um, my fear of taking a break, you know, and just figuring out for myself what is it that I would want is the thing I need to work on or build up to. Tell me about that break. What does it mean to you? What is what is the break? Break from work? Break from, from what? And how long does it last, that break? Yes. So I've been working since the age of 12. Like, I've always worked. I've never taken a break. I've always school work, school work, school work. And now that I'm 27, I haven't taken a break. Mm. I haven't like stepped back and said, you know, let me take this month, half a year, a year, just to figure out what direction to take my life into. Mm. And I, you know, the more I talk about it, even with you now, I'm trying to, I'm realizing this is maybe what I need, you mm. know, because when you don't speak it out loud, you don't realize. Absolutely. Oh, it totally helps clarity. to speak about things. Yeah, it really helps. And if if someone's asking really good questions, really, you know, focused questions, that really helps to, to dig deep as well. So you can be asking those questions yourself sometimes, especially when you take a break, you know, you can sit down and start asking yourself. So, so I hear you, um, you want to take a break, and it can be six months to to a year. And when you talk about it, you really light up. It, it, there's a sense of clarity and ease, right? That you may be experiencing. You, you it, it's a happy feeling. Now, if you take that break, do you have do you have anything to lose from from taking that break? Is there anything that's stopping you? Um, I think. You know, just financial stability because, mm -hmm. you know, just like that control that I have over my life, I expect certain things. And the only thing I, I feel like I would lose is the current job that I have. Okay. You know, once I decide to get back into it, I would just have to look for something else. Is Do you think you could find another job if you, t if you come back six months later? Um, I think I can find another job I'm not sure if it will be financially flexible as I am now like meaning that um, 
maybe there are better jobs or maybe there are worse. Mm-hmm. It's just one that I have now is very comfortable in terms of fl- uh, schedule, in terms of the pay. You know, they're very accommodating. Ah, so, so that's good. So there's uh, there's good schedule, flexibility, and pay. So can that also give you a little bit of freedom to take a break for yourself? I I would I don't I would have to maybe request time off or something because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. my um my job I I travel a lot for my work so I can have one day of from morning to all the way until late at night I'll be working and then I'll have two days off but those two days because you work so so many hours you kind of don't feel them so uh-huh Maybe taking time off from work and asking them if they were willing to, you know, take me back after, let's say, a vacation or, you know, maybe that could be possible. But Well, the good news is there are opportunities in New York, so you can always get a job. And after you take a break, you may gain so much clarity and understanding and you can come up with a solid plan that will take you onto a new journey, Right. That's really the purpose of taking a break, right? To figure yourself out. Maybe there is no need to come back to the 9-to-5 job. Maybe maybe you will, uh, you know, have this idea that you're looking to develop. Now, so tell me more about that break. What would you like to, what, what would you like to achieve during that break? Is it about writing a business plan? Is it about just taking a break for yourself and not thinking about anything but really doing yoga re- a retreat somewhere or um, traveling to Thailand and just forgetting the world and uh, delving do within yourself. What yeah. what is this? Right. Hmm. Definitely the second part. I would definitely want to just let go and you know not have any plans and do retreats and visit other places and just explore. Even New York. I feel like there's so many places that are under develop. I mean. Have not I have not discovered for myself aside from other states aside from other countries just mm-hmm. kind of letting go and then see where that takes me more so than having like a strategic plan. Yeah. Mhm. Mhm. Does it have to be six months? Can it be shorter? Can it be longer? Like what? What do you have in your mind for the length of that break? Um. To be honest, I wouldn't. I wouldn't even know. I like I said, I've never taken time off just to do nothing or anything. I'm not sure how to put it. So mm-hmm. maybe maybe a month is enough for me. Maybe a month isn't enough. I feel like I wouldn't know until. I don't know. I don't know how to establish a timeline. Well, that means that you would be leaving the job, right? Yeah. So. As you leave the job, you are already opening yourself up to the this universe of taking a break. And it can be a month, it can be more than that. Um, and this universe can be that you'll take a break for a month, let's say at the yoga retreat somewhere upstate New York. This is just examples, right? And as you take that new journey new ideas are coming in, new people, new new explorations about yourself, and then it can take you onto a new journey that you, you, you don't know about right now. Completely new journey. And in that journey, you, you may find there is a, a job opportunity where you can use your skills so you can start making money like at, at, at a retreat center or, you know, a, maybe having some sort of creative partnership with someone. So, I'm, there, I mean, there's so many different examples. Once you open yourself up to this the un, un, universe, things click and things happen, right? And if they don't, if they, if they don't for any reason, you can always come back to New York and get a, get a job. There are lots of jobs in New York, right? So really, yeah. there's not a whole lot to lose. Do you have any like savings that you can you know use to at least take a month off? Yeah. So that's good. Absolutely. That's very good. So you 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 can take a month off um, safely, 
few months, maybe a month, two months, just what do you have that in your mind? I can definitely do two or three months safely um, with the money that I have, with the savings that I have, with the support that I have for myself. I can do that, right? So you you have that cushion, right? So there's, yeah. Okay, that's very good. That's good to hear. So then uh, what else would be stopping you? So you have some safety um, to take a break. Is there anything else that could stop you? Yeah. You know that you can get it. I'm sorry? I, I feel like I just, I don't know. I haven't been able to take the first step. What There's is the, nothing really stop. What What's the first step? To make that conscious decision of, you know, take a break, step out of this life and try something else. Mm -hmm. And I don't. Uh -huh. Step out of this life, try something else. And it's really the exploration into the world where there is no rigid, this strategic plan, as you said, right? Because you've been doing this. You've been working since you were 12. And it's work, school, work, school, job, 9 to 5, you know, delivering at your job and, and just being busy, no break. So a break can be a tremendous, huge work that you can do on yourself, right? Amazing personal growth work. Unstructured in many ways. Okay, all right. So, so what we can do is... Um, what I'm hearing is that there's there's this need to take a break and explore and really to take a break from this routine um, how many years is that already so since you were 12 you're 27 now 15 years kind of going being in, the, in that yeah. same mold right yeah. mm -hmm. 15 years stop. Go, 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 go yeah 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 <laughs> Kind of. So what do you think you need? What qualities, what resources do you need to take that step? What inner resources do you need? Um, inner resources. Well, also, I think if there was a break to, you know, if I was to take a break, it shouldn't just be... Uh, you know, being lazy on the couch all day, every day, mm -hmm. actually um, committing to what I'm saying in terms of that journey or discovery, you know, to actually go through with the plan and make, maybe do a commitment where I compose a plan, you know, things to do or places to visit or things to gather or qualities to attain or maybe... Um, Definitely commitment, like a commitment plan. And then the second one would be not to fear, you know, get rid of this fear that when I come back, there'll be no opportunities for me to get back into, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because that's the biggest thing for me always is to lose the opportunity I have now. Although from my experience, I mean, I've been blessed. I've only gotten better experiences. I've never retreated, you know, mm -hmm. so... Mentally, I understand that things always happen for better, and I always look for better and better. But, you know, there's always that fear that, you know, you won't get the same benefits you're getting now later. You know, you'll miss out, and then you'll regret it. Um, mm -hmm. And also, I think I'm very, like, I'm very fearful of the, you know, what if something happens and there's an emergency and I can't, you know, I won't be able to help out or do anything because I'm out of, of a job or out of, you know, financial stability and, you know, who will pick up the slack, so to say, if that was to ever happen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what do you mean by emergency? Emergency in your life or someone else's life? I don't know, but things happened to me so many times that there was always, you know, blind, <laughs> no, mind-blowing uh, situations that I never thought would happen, and they've happened. And you know, I um, 
just to give you an example, I went to, I enrolled into a radiology school for an ultrasound and I paid my tuition completely in full and the school closed within two months and we were left on the streets without uh, completing the program, without our tuition money, without, yeah. we were just scammed and left to be. And so I had to go look for a different school, look for money to pay for tuition all over again. And just, you know, experiences like that that you think in this country would never happen to you. Mm. But they happen always, you know. I just don't know. I don't know. Was, I don't there, know. was there any way to transfer those credits to a new school, different school? No. So it was a loss. You took a loss, basically. It, it was, yeah, it was a total loss, but... Um, I was able to find a school who were, they were accommodating, they didn't, they didn't make me do the full course all over again. Oh, okay, so Even though, good. yeah, yeah, they didn't transfer, but I was able to. Yeah, so there's a way, there's a way. There's, this there's human, always a way. Yeah, there's yeah. always a way. There's, there's this human factor that people can't understand things. If you really explain the situation, they will understand, right, that human condition. But I can see how this can, you know, create a little bit of you know, a traumatic experience. Like, oh my God, I just lost everything. The school closed. Well, it may happen again. How am I going to deal with this, right? <clears throat> but then yeah, you do. I'm sorry. But then you. What were you saying? I'm sorry. Yeah, because um, after that, a couple of a few months later, uh, the company I was working with closed down also mm -hmm. because of scam activity and mm -hmm. there was a huge thing going on and I was without a job my mom was without a job my brother were without a job and so it was like a whole family thing and I just felt the pressure that I was the one responsible for everyone and so I was able to get my mom employed I got my brother employed and so everyone thank God is okay again but it was just feeling that pressure that you know it's up to me to figure out once situations arise. So if I step out of the game, so to say, to take my, you know, peace or, or journey, who will, who will help them? God forbid something happens. Mm -hmm. you know? I'm kind of that cushion for them as well. Yeah, yeah. There's lots of responsibility. You, you have yeah. a younger brother? Younger brother? Um, I have two brothers. One is younger, one is older. Mm -hmm. And... My older brother is in my field, and my younger brother, he's still trying to figure things out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, you, you, there's a sense of responsibility, and you feeling that you have to be um, supporting them somehow and helping them if there's trouble, right? Including your mom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So that's one, one um, sort of like a stopper on the back of your mind. Do you, so when the, the difficult situation happened, was it just you supporting them or did they have any resources themselves, whether it's emotional resources or material resources to get through? Um, see, the, whether they had it or not, I felt like it was my responsibility to fix the situation. I don't mm -hmm. know why I okay. felt that way, okay. but it just seemed that they weren't doing enough. You know, and that was stressing me out. So I had to, you know, figure things out. And I would try to get my brother into different jobs, you know, like I would find work and I would give him, kind of substitute myself for him. And my, my family, we're interconnected very much so. And mm -hmm. for some reason, I've taken that leadership role where I'm the responsible one and you know, mm -hmm. and my, my, my family, they're responsible and they're, you know, they're, they're fine. But I'm always like that advisory of the family, mm -hmm. so to say, you know, like when we get together to make family um, con dinners or conversations or solve problems, like I'm in the center of it for mm -hmm. some reason, probably put myself there, but. Right, right. So that's a good quality, to be that leader, to be, you know, helping your family. You guys are interconnected. That's a good, you know, family aspect of it. But how can you, how can you move forward in your life to have complete fulfillment, to be a happier person, more fulfilled person, 
and ultimately more successful person, right? Because when you find yourself, when you do what you love, you are becoming much more successful too, right? There's you're emotionally happy, and there's more you thrive more, um, and you're going to be in a much better place to help anyone if you need to. So how can you allow yourself the freedom to move on, to be yourself, to have the fulfillment, and still have the the responsibility, let's say, for your family? How can you maneuver that? What do you, what do you need? In order to move on, what what change do you need to make within yourself um, about how you feel or think about the whole situation? Well, you know, when I speak to Lyman, and my boyfriend, he always says that you know people need to live their own lives, and I just can't let go that controlling side of me that wants to help everyone, and if they're not doing well, I feel like I'm not doing well, mm. and. I don't know. I just. I guess I just have to let go. So, it's if you're not helping someone, you're not doing well. Meaning, you're not. You're not what? If they're not doing well, then I. It, I feel like it's my responsibility to make sure that they are doing well, that they get out of the situation that they do. So I mm -hmm. go out of my way and then. What basically you, try to live their life, get in their life. So if like, you help them and they're doing well, how does it make you feel? Calm. Calm. Right. So there's peace. Like, thank God. Like, right. come thank relax. God. Like at, at the end of the night, when you give that last breath, that's how I feel. I feel like, okay. Mm -hmm. So there's calm Where's and there? peace. Okay. Okay. So that's, <coughs> excuse me. So that's what you want to feel. You want to feel that calm and peace. But you also said, and you said that your boyfriend said that people need to live their own lives, right? So it's yeah. up to them to figure out what's good for them and develop their own dependence, in, right? Dependence on them, not on other people. Because this is who you are. You're independent. You're not depending on anyone or anything. You've been providing to yourself and um, you've been working and you're, in, you're you're really an independent person and, and, and that that's pro that probably feels good in some ways right to be resourceful and sure. yeah. yeah and um, and so what what do you think what do you think will benefit them in their life um, what do you think will benefit them in their life for their own growth? It's nice to have support. You're giving them the support. Like maybe you'd like to have yourself. We started the conversation with that, right? You'd like to have support. So you're giving it to them. So they have they have that support from you. Can you, can you see that? Yeah. That they have the support from you. Do you have any thoughts? That's why I kind of, you know, they have the support and that's why I feel the lack of support. Yeah. You know, that's why it's not as easy for me to just say, bye guys, you're on your own. You yeah. Know, because, I don't, mm, because yeah. you don't want them to feel what you feel. Yeah. Right. Right. I want them to succeed. Like, there's nothing more yeah. in the world that I want is them. If they're okay, I feel like I would quit my job, fly to Indonesia, stay there for a year, yeah. knowing that they're, my home is okay. You know, like, yeah. it, gives, it gives me a sense of peace and calmness knowing that they're doing well, everything is going great, you know, and that makes me, that gives me room to explore my own wants and needs. Mm -hmm. But it, I don't know where this hmm. worry, I think it's like a worry that can't, like, I don't know where it started from, but it's, well, you do know, they, you, de mm -hmm. they depend a lot they on me financially, lot. emotionally. Yeah. But that, <clears throat> that structure that you're describing, right, this is, we're actually getting somewhere here. Um, if they're okay, then I can explore Okay, they depend on you somehow. 
you give them that support which you don't have yourself and if they have that support uh, from you and if they are okay then you'll have the freedom to explore yourself travel do whatever you need to do to have fulfillment in your life so that's a formula right now yeah. right it's a formula and it's kind of holding you back a little bit holding you back so what what, what something but we're talking about it which means something needs to be changed about it right yeah something has to be changed so how how can we change that? How can we look at it and wh how can we change the pieces of that puzzle? I I can't tell you because I, I, I'm doing the coaching part and I believe that my clients have all the insights and resources and uh, answers to them to their problems and I I know that you do. So let's let's see if we can find it today. If not, then we can use hypnosis to help you have better understanding and clarity on this situation so you can sit down and really dig deep and ask yourself how do I resolve this right asking that good, good question good, good solid questions can help you find answers within yourself <clears throat> you can ask yourself every day how do I resolve this situation how do I move on and still feel calm at peace and and they feel like they are getting what they need. Right? Yeah. Right. Because what 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 do they need? What do you think they need? Um hmm, that's a good point. Well, when it comes to my brothers, my mom loves to call me and, you know, tell me to scold them. You need to tell this and this and that because they listen to you and they don't listen to me. So I'm that preacher. <laughs> um, and financially, you know, my brothers, even though one is older, one is younger, they're, um, they don't have that ability to save money. They don't have that knowledge to be on the budget more. You know, it's not that they both work, but for some reason, money come and go. And... There's always, you know, Elena, can you help me out? Elena, can you, you know, this and that. And sometimes it's a lot, sometimes it's not. And But it adds up. It's always I have to be that yeah. uh, saving pot. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. And, then, and there's this dependence on you. And the more you give, the more, almost like in um, the codependent relationship, right? The codependency, you know, codependency when we reinforce a certain behavior in another person that is detrimental to them, really. And why do we do that? Because of our own insecurity, right? So neither party in that relationship is succeeding. The, the, the other person who you're, you know, pleasing or helping because you, there may be a, a reinforcement of... Um, the victim behavior or lazy behavior or addiction, you know, this is, this is just examples. And, and the other person that is reinforcing that behavior in another person is doing it. Why? Maybe for this, yeah. for the approval, maybe to feel worthy, mm -hmm. maybe f to feel like you're doing good, you're, you're enough. But all of that is happening because at the very core, that person may not be feeling good enough or not worthy. You know, so that's the insecurity mm -hmm. that you keep re reinforcing within you, and um, not re I mean, re feeling it and reinforcing the other behavior in the other person. So that needs to break. So there's a um, there may be a bit of that kind of um, dynamic in some sense, right? Mm -hmm. Um, or maybe, yeah, not. absolutely. Um, I don't need to talk about it anymore. I'm sorry, it's like becoming clear, yeah, yeah. So you want them to succeed, you want them to be happy, but there's another different way to help them grow, right? There's a different way to help them grow, and there's a different way to help yourself grow. Of course, one way is to say, that's it, enough, done, okay, cut off. <laughs> it's, hard, it's hard to say that, you know, you can't just leave a person hanging there, 
on some on, uh, to some degree. So you can figure you figure out the way to to you know to um, change that relationship to change that relationship. I think um, the new uh, event that's happening in my family now is my grandparents. They came back from Russia to visit, and they're American citizens too. But they're visiting now, and they're probably going to stay. And I've shared what's been going on lately, and I feel like I have a sense that my grandparents are going to stop or do the cutoff for me. You know, because I've shared with them what's been going on and mm-hmm. how it's influencing me. And I think now that I, I have that support from my grandparents, maybe I'll be able yeah. to actually move on. So see how wonderful? Something. You have support. You have support from your parents. I mean, your grandparents. Emotional support, advice, and mentorship. You have support from your boyfriend. You just mentioned that he gives you some good advice, right? Yeah, so it's great. Yes, and and you have support. I'm sure from other people. You have support from me today. So I wanted to yeah. know that. So there's plenty. That's of what I mean. I feel like a lot of it is a lot of it is in my head too. It's that fear that I don't have anyone, even though there are people. But I don't want to bother them, or I don't want to burden them with my problems and mm-hmm. so I keep saying that I'm by myself depend only on myself mm-hmm. and so it's kind of like that vicious cycle yeah yeah because you don't want to be the kind of person that whoever you're providing right now whoever you're helping right now right you don't want other people to feel the way you feel right now yeah right? Exactly. so yeah, but it's a, it's still a little bit different though. But I can see the, the, the those formulas in your head right now. So even the word support needs to be reframed, right? There's mm-hmm. a different way to see support and um, to to receive support. Support is a good thing. We, you know, there are people that are just so good at getting support, whether it's raising money for a non-for-profit organization, right? Um, raising money for your projects. There's so much money around in this world. There's so much, and, and um, there's plenty of support. Support from people, from mentors, friends, colleagues. So let's look at this support, right, um, aspect. Mm-hmm. Then trust, um, trust in yourself and trusting that your family can succeed on their own and breaking the dynamic of a... A relationship that is not healthy, right? Any any parts of that relationship that there may be right now that is not healthy, maybe we, we have to find a way to reframe that. So first, support. Yeah. Support for you. We need to reframe that. Support, I am, I'm going to design some suggestions for you and you're going to tell me how you feel about them. I am, first of all, I have support. It is important to realize I have plenty of, of support around me people or it can be institutions right um you can call it how however you want to call it i have plenty of support around people environment environment by institutions i mean um even the yoga retreat you can always do Work, community, work, community, yes, work study, pro, give something to them, they give something to you. So there's a, there's always this play that happens back and forth. So there's support in, in these separate uh, places. And there are many more examples. So there's environment. The environment is supportive. People are supportive of me. So I have a supportive environment. That's your suggestion, your belief that you want to instill within you. I have a supportive environment. I see I see support in my life from people that love me and care for me. Right? I mm-hmm. I am 
open to support. So that's good for you, right? I'm open to support. I am open to receiving because right now you're not open to receiving. You're giving, mm -hmm. giving, giving, but you're not receiving. I'm open to receiving. So I'm open to receiving. Do, do you see that? How there's close, you're close to receiving right yeah. now because it's more of a giving and giving and giving to others. So in order to receive, you have to feel relaxed and you have to feel like you deserve it almost, you know, I'm deserving of it. I am deserving of receiving. I'm deserving of receiving. It is okay to receive. It's okay to receive, right? Yeah. Can you see how there may be some belief that says, it says not yet, not, I'm not ready, it's not good, I have to give, that, right? Absolutely. Something along those lines. It's okay to receive. That others need it more than me. Right, right. But you need you need things too. You need you need support. You need um, emotional and, and material things. And material things can, can come in all sorts of forms. Like, really, material things come in so many different ways. A, a new opportunity, a new job, a um, new project, a gift. Um, a lottery um, gift certificate, <laughs> a, a, um, a um, scholarship, scholarship, right? Grant, things like that. There's there's lots of support around. Okay, so it's okay to receive. Giving yourself freedom to receive. Once you open up, then things are coming in. Because when you're closed, when you block yourself from receiving, you're not seeing it, right? You're not allowing it into your heart. You're not allowing it into your life. So that's a really good start right now for us to work on by helping you open up to receiving, feeling deserving, I deserve to receive, I give, and I receive. And the receiving can come from your grandparents, and when the time is right, it can start coming from even your brothers and, and your mother. Right? Once, once they see a different dynamic in you, maybe they want to be able to contribute, you know, but you want to be able to open up and see them as resourceful. Here's another one. I see my family, I see my family as successful and resourceful mm -hmm. individuals, right? So you yeah. want to believe in them too. You want to be able to see them resourceful, not feel like they need your help. You have to save them. You have to help them emotionally, financially. You have to scold them, but really see them as resourceful, almost like a coach, right? You, you, see, you see them have knowledge and experience and resources because we all have these resources and when you see it mm -hmm. then you they'll be able to raise that within themselves and they will become self-dependent self-reliant and that's the greatest gift you can give them right would you agree absolutely okay yeah. so so instead of seeing them as um you know unresourceful and dependent weak or you know they can't do it on themselves. I have to. I have to help them. I see. I choose to see my family as res, as resourceful and successful individuals, right? Yes. So these are the mm -hmm. kind of things that are different, and they're going to start changing the way you think, the way you act, and behave towards them and towards yourself. So I think we have a good okay. start. These are your suggestions. I'll send you a copy of these suggestions. You can work with them. Um, and okay. the way to work with these um, suggestions is to literally read them out loud. I'll, I'll send you anywhere from up to 10, 10 good affirmations. This is a good start. And you can start reading them out loud and uh, really mm -hmm. visualize, start visualizing these things for yourself. So let's, we have some time left and uh, let's do a bit of a session for you with these suggestions. Yeah. So are you ready to start? Yeah. You, are you comfortable? Yeah. All right. So, <clears throat> can you hear me okay? Yes. Excellent. So what I'd like you to do is, I'd like you to actually keep your eyes open and find okay. a...
find a point of focus. So don't look into the camera, just find a point of focus right in front of you. It can be a, a wall, it can be a, a shelf or something on the ceiling, a lamp, whatever you want. So find okay. a point of focus and uh, keep staring at that one single spot without moving your eyes. Make sure it's comfortable, that there's no stress in your eyes or eyelids. But just keep staring at, staring at that one single spot that moving your eyes, try to keep your eyelids open. And uh, as you keep staring at that one spot, as you keep gazing at that one spot, allow yourself to see everything beyond that spot. So allow yourself to become aware of the peripheral vision so you can see everything beyond the spot without moving your eyes. Be aware of the walls, the ceiling, everything else in your room. You could probably even be aware of your bed and see it somehow. So notice everything you see beyond. Obviously you can't see anything behind you, but everything around you, 180 degrees. Keep your eyes gazing at that one single spot and notice how your eyelids have a natural tendency to blink. <coughs> and as they have that tendency to blink, when you're ready, when you're ready, you can close your eyes down and just let yourself drift and relax. And Elena, as you keep your eyes closed, move your attention into your body and just become, become aware of your whole body from the top of your head all the way down to the tips of your toes. And whatever thoughts come into your mind, push those thoughts into the distance. And you may find that there may be thoughts coming in and out. Allow yourself to stay in between those thoughts, those gaps between the thoughts, and allow yourself to stay in those gaps as you expand them very slowly into the state of complete thoughtlessness, a deep ocean of calmness, naturally moving deep within yourself into your powerful mind, where all changes are possible. You have all the necessary resources within yourself to make the change in your life. Allow yourself freedom to travel, explore, and find fulfillment in your life. Free to explore. So take a moment and move into that feeling of freedom as if you're completely liberated. Liberated from, from the shackles, so to say, of having this need to help save others or scold someone. support someone and truly allow yourself this freedom. Imagine for a moment that everything's okay. Calm, peaceful, relaxed right now. Everything's okay. And all the all the people that you want need to help, all the people you feel and believe you need or must help, they are actually okay right now. And the more you trust them right now, the more you trust these people to find themselves. The more resourceful they become, more confident they feel. So imagine you trust them. Imagine you believe that they can and they will 
survive and become even stronger, more confident, more resourceful and successful on their own. Allow your mind to revise the concept of support for yourself and for others. Just stay where you are, don't think, feel the trust that everything's okay, that they're okay, and you can move on. Feel that trust that they're all okay, they're fine, and you can move on. And you can move on into that new chapter in your life. new healthy chapter where you feel ultimate fulfillment, joy and success. And move your attention back into your body and notice how much more relaxed you feel. So relaxed that even if you try to move, you just wouldn't want to. Your arms are relaxed, your legs are relaxed. Your facial muscles are relaxed. And so are your eyelids. Notice your breath is effortless. It just happens on its own. And as I speak with your inner unconscious mind, I will give you a few positive suggestions and you can continue to work with these suggestions in the next few weeks and when you listen to the recording of this session which is being done as we speak all of these suggestions will be reinforced to become your permanent reality Silently and forcefully, Elena, go ahead and repeat to yourself right now. I have a supportive environment. Really hear your inner voice speak within your mind. I am open to support. And repeat that three times. Really hear your inner voice. I am open to support. I have support all around me from people that love me. Repeat it three times and let it settle in deeper and deeper. Let it settle in deep within yourself. I am open to receiving. Repeat that three times and let it settle. Process that new thought. And feel your heart opening up confidently, freely to receiving. And let it settle deeper and deeper. The next suggestion, repeat three times. I deserve to receive. Three times. Feel the power of this new thought. Feel the power of this affirmation. The energy of this new thought energizing you in a positive way, your mind, your body, your heart, that's right, you deserve to receive, because it's okay to receive, it is time to receive, you're open to it, you deserve it, you want it, it's all around, as you give, you allow yourself to receive, things come, they flow, they come in, they come out, 
and you can feel that natural flow of energy, that freedom, that movement of energy. Things come in, things go out. As you give, you receive. Open, deserving. And you allow yourself to see your family, Irina, as resourceful individuals. You believe in them. They are resourceful. They can succeed. Even if it's little steps here and there. See them as successful and resourceful individuals. Allow yourself to believe that they are successful and resourceful just as you are. And having this thought and belief, you truly allow yourself a new type of support for your family. You support them by believing they are resourceful individuals. You truly help them this way. So silently say to yourself, I choose to see my family as resourceful individuals. One more time, I see my family as resourceful individuals. You allow yourself a new dynamic in the relationship with those that you thought needed your help or support, emotional or financial. You allow yourself to develop a new and healthy dynamic that works for you and for them in a new, magnificent way. Ultimately, allow yourself to move into a new chapter in your life, you know, where you can truly, truly take a break. Let these suggestions integrate within your mind, your body, your whole experience. As I slowly count from one to five, when I count to five, you can open your eyes. Feeling good, refreshed, as if you took a good, good nap. Recharging nap. One slowly, easily, and gently, beginning to come out. Feeling the freedom, feeling the joy, ready to make a new change in your life. Three and four, surprised and amazed how easy it is for you to make these changes. Your eyelids are refreshed, four and five, when you're ready, you can open your eyes and come back into a fully awake state. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Oh, that was great. Thank you. You are welcome. You're welcome. So just give me a few, few, few words. Few words. How, how was this state for you? What went through your mind? What, what did you experience? Um, very, a lot of calmness in my body all, all throughout. Just that sense of self, um, you know, that kind of like peaceful um, spirit almost, you know, traveling throughout the body and just complete calmness, you know. I think that, that's what I lack a lot, too. It's just too much tension inside, and when I let go, it's just calmness. That's great. That's great. Well, we did... A bit more than an hour, so that was a very good, um, good yeah. session. I'm gonna send you your recording, and we're gonna follow yeah. up, follow up on your progress. But in the meantime, I want to thank you for being part of this and uh, participating in the series. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate this. Absolutely.
Well, this concludes our session today with Elena. Thank you very much, Elena, for being part of the show, and thank you for joining us. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you have any questions, remember to leave your comment below, or you can simply log into alphamindmethod.com. You can go to contact page, send me any questions you have, and if you'd like to be part of the show, you can also send me a message. If you go to contact page, just choose Alpha Mind um, Hypnosis and Coaching YouTube series and tell me what you'd like to work on. Perhaps you'll have a chance to be part of the show and receive a complimentary hypnosis session. Remember to subscribe to our hypnosis series, Alpha Mind Hypnosis and Coaching series, and you'll be updated on the upcoming episodes. And of course, if you'd like to receive three absolutely complimentary self-hypnosis audio programs for stress management, log on to alphamindmethod.com, scroll down, and sign up for a newsletter, and you'll receive three audio sessions in your inbox. Thanks for coming and joining us today, and I look forward to seeing you again. Bye-bye.